this video is about a uh, block matrices. So we have matrix A, which is an upper block triangular matrix. So it is composed of these blocks. So we have here a square matrix of size n by n, phi, and here we have a square matrix of size k by k, omega. Here is matrix epsi, a general matrix of size n by k. And then here we have a block of zeros of size k by n. The result we are interested in is that the determinant of A is determinant phi times determinant omega. And the proof is by induction. We will start with the case in which n is equal to 1, which means that phi is just uh, a matrix with one element. So there is phi 1, 1. And then the first column will be zeros. A uh, matrix of psi will be a row uh, vector. And then there is matrix omega. The determinant of A can be obtained by doing the cofactor expansion using the first column. The first column is composed of zeros except the first element. So here we have phi 1, 1. And then it is multiplied by the determinant of A after removing the first row and the first column. And so the remaining part of A will actually be matrix omega. So here we multiply by the determinant of omega. Uh, phi 1, 1 basically is also the determinant of matrix phi because it is a one by one matrix. So we have our result here established uh, in the special case of a small n being equal to one. Now we will assume that this relationship here is valid uh, when uh, small n is equal to m. And then we will try to prove its validity uh, when a small n is equal to m plus 1. So in that case, there will be matrix phi. It is m plus 1 by m plus 1. So here we have the first column will be phi 1, 1, phi 2, 1, all the way to phi m plus 1, 1. And then the second column, phi 1, 2, phi 2, 2, all the way to phi m plus 1, 2. And then we have phi 1, m plus 1, phi 2, m plus 1, and then phi m plus 1, m plus 1, m plus 1. Uh, and uh, here we will have, here we will have zeros. Here we will have our matrix omega of size k by k. And here we will have uh, the uh, n by k matrix, which is epsilon. Now we want to find the determinant of the determinant of A. So we'll use cofactor expansion. And so uh, our, uh, we'll use the first column. Uh, we will have a summation. Uh, the first column, note that here we have a block zero matrix. So the first column, all those guys are zeros. So our summation will uh, have m plus one terms. Uh, and if the index of summation is v, then we have minus one uh, to the v plus one, and then uh, element uh, v1 uh, in matrix phi. And then we multiply by minor v1. So minor v1 is, uh, you know, basically, um, we go to matrix A, we eliminate the vth row and the first column, and we take the determinant of the remaining matrix. Now, note that the remaining matrix, okay, if, for example, here, if we uh, eliminate uh, the second row and the first column, we will end up with a matrix that is upper block triangular. And this matrix will have, will have, you know, the remaining part of the phi matrix will be M by M. So by the induction, by the induction assumption, uh, basically this minor uh, will uh, will have a determinant that we can compute. Basically, uh, it will be the determinant of omega times the determinant of uh, of phi after eliminating the vth row, vth row and the first column. <clears throat> okay. So by the induction assumption. Uh, MV1 is the determinant of omega uh, by MV1 tilde, which is the determinant of <coughs> the uh, phi matrix uh, after eliminating the vth row and the first column. Now, so all those terms will have this determinant of omega as a common factor, so it can be taken outside. And then what is this remaining part? So this remaining part is exactly the determinant of, uh, of phi. Uh, you know, again, obtained using cofactor expansion uh, on the first uh, column. Uh, and so now, you know, so our result is valid for n equals 1. If it is valid for a general uh, positive integer m, then it is valid for uh, m plus 1. Then uh, basically our statement here is valid for every um, uh, positive integer uh, n.
Uh, now, there, you know, there is no difference if uh, between our, the case, uh, you know, that we have just uh, investigated and the case in which uh, we have a lower a block uh, triangular, a block triangular matrix. So also in this case here, uh, the determinant will be uh, the determinant of P uh, by the determinant of Q. So now we, uh, we take again, we repeat this step from the previous page. And uh, now what if we multiply this from the right by this, again, carefully designed matrix, which is a upper block triangular. So we can check that if we do this, uh, which means that we take our matrix of interest A, B, C, D, and we sandwich it uh, from the left and from the right by these two block triangular matrices, we will get basically uh, uh, this uh, matrix, this matrix here. Uh, now, uh, what we can do is uh, we can, uh, you know, we can proceed in a number in a number of ways. So one of them uh, is what if we take uh, the inverse, uh, the inverse of all sides. So, so the, our matrix of interest is assumed uh, to be an invertible matrix, and this matrix is invertible if we assume also that, you know, in addition to A, that this matrix D minus C A inverse B is invert. Of course, the inverse of this block diagonal matrix, and this can be checked uh, in a straightforward way, is a block diagonal matrix with, a, so the inverse of this guy is a matrix here with A inverse and D minus C, A inverse B, all inverse like this, okay? So if we take, if we take the inverse of, if we take the inverse of all sides, uh, then we will get that the inverse of this matrix is equal to, uh, now, if we have three matrices multiplied together and uh, and we have inverse, so we'll get uh, the inverse of this matrix. And then the inverse of the matrix of interest, which is assumed to be invertible, and then the inverse of this matrix here. Um, inverse. Okay. Uh, then, of course, you know these two matrices that we basically uh, use to uh, uh, manage or handle matrix A, B, C, D. Both of them are invertible because both of them they have a determinant of unity. So the so uh, the determinant is non-zero and the matrices are and the matrices are invertible. So what we can do now is that we can uh, you know we can multiply we can multiply from uh, the left by this matrix without the inverse. And then we can do the same from uh, the right so that we have on one side the inverse of A, B, C, D. Okay, and so we have a formula now for the inverse of this matrix that is composed of A, B, C, and D. Okay, so the idea is now I can have A, B, C, D inverse, what it is. So to get, uh, to get this alone on the left, we will have this minus A inverse B, 0M by N, I, M, N. And so this will be here. And then this guy will be here. And then the inverse of this one, which is I, N, N, 0, N by M, minus C, A inverse, I, M by N. And then finally, we do the we do the multiplication of the multiplication of these uh, these three matrices, and this will give us an expression for the inverse of A, B, C, D of this uh, matrix composed of these uh, four blocks. Uh, and so here it is. So basically, we end up we end up with this um, uh, we end up with this expression for uh, for the uh, for the inverse. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, uh, the point is that whenever you see an inverse, then it means that, uh, you know, the, the implicit assumption is that the uh, matrix is indeed invertible. We can then multiply, and this is the formula that we get for the inverse. So we can, we can express the inverse also as composed of four blocks and these blocks as are uh, as are given okay now we can uh, we can uh, basically 
uh, redo the same steps, uh, but uh, we can multiply here uh, by this uh, upper uh, block triangular matrix. So we can like redo, uh, redo, and we can get another expression, another expression for uh, the inverse of this matrix. And definitely we know that if a matrix is invertible, then the inverse is unique. So it must be the case that this expression is exactly equal to that expression here. So the inverse of the matrix can be expressed in this way, or it can be expressed in this way. And moreover, we can, for example, if we focus on this block, this matrix here, must be equal to this matrix there. Okay, so we get this result here, which is very important. And this is the matrix inversion lemma. Just by renaming the, uh, the matrices, we can uh, put the matrix inversion lemma in this standard in this standard form, and it is a very important um, relationship. So A plus B C D inverse. So this is equal to A inverse. So I have minus then A inverse here, A inverse there, and then we have B and then D, and then we have the inverse of the matrix here. So we would C inverse plus a inverse again, but now we put D here and B here. 